Welcome back everyone to another episode of Let's Play Advanced Tactics Gold. Um, at the start of this episode I think I'm going to do a quick overview of how things are going. The first thing I'm going to talk about is production. So we haven't looked at production for a while but let's just uh, take a brief look and go over some things. This has basically been my setup for the last five or six, seven turns. Um, I'm turning on and off tanks in Crow, well, this is Yokohama, yeah. I'm turning them on and off and with machine guns. You can see that everywhere I've ramped down my number of political points. Um, some cities, my, normally I have my capital producing a lot of political points because I mean it has so many points you can usually squeeze out a lot of political points and still get some supply done. However, I'm using about, I think, 8,000 supply a turn right now. So I actually need it to produce a ton of supply. And that is that is a big thing. A big issue is when you get these huge armies, you start having this trade-off with, can I build more units, or do I have to spend that amount of production power on supply instead? Especially considering if you build more units, they're going to use even more supply on the next turn. So I'm currently building 9,200 supply. That's to get my reserves up. My headquarter reserves are a little bit low right now at 7,100. So you can see my stockpile is actually below the amount that I'm sending out, which I, I always like to have a supply uh, stockpile at least at the very minimum greater than the amount I'm sending out. So because that's not true, I'm gonna greatly increase my supply for next turn, which is what I've already done. This is uh, the finished um, production overview for this turn. And we can see that the newly acquired Nagano is now producing some more supply for us. I've also got it doing a few machine guns and a few submachine guns. Um, the submachine guns is just because I was building submachine guns for the last two turns here when it had weird point totals. And I'm just going to let that all average uh, like fix itself back up to a decimal number so we're producing 7.3 we'll have 0.7 left from last turn and that means a total of 8 will be made and that'll be exactly 8 and then I can cancel the submachine gun production here but so that's what my production is looking like and um, in the background I've been upgrading some oil spots so these are both oil level 3's now and I think those are the only two I've done. Other than that, I'm, st I'm just basically the decision every turn is whether or not I'm going to be producing artillery and whether or not I'll be producing standard light tanks. Um, that's the big decision. Like, is it worth it? Should I keep, you know, for a while when I didn't have the war on the Eastern Front, I didn't think it'd be worth it because um, I was pretty much saturated with my tank capacity in the West. And there's not a whole lot of open land in the east where the tanks are going to be useful. That's uh, This is it right here. As far as I can tell, we have a narrow strip. Let me zoom in so you can see. We have this narrow strip, which is tank favorable. Um, we don't have much in the way of favorable land over here except for this little strip. And then we also have this open area. Those are the only spots where tanks are really going to be advantageous so I've kind of shifted away from them all right now that being all done and said we can actually move on to the combat okay and just as one final mention before I do get into combat uh, political points wise I am going to be saving for the infantry uh, no what it was infantry, right so there was one that was 444 maybe it was light tank <clears throat> Yeah, machine guns is you. Yeah, I th no, I think I was trying to save for the infantry though. Um, so basically, the political point situation is we don't expect to ever have enough political points to do any further research. So research is done, and that's fine. I mean, if we're ten times, this is episode twenty of Advanced Tactics. I never thought I'd make it this far. So um, normally, I quit games when the it's obvious that they're going one way, but since I decided to be very suboptimal and attack China. <laughs> Well, before I'm done with China, um, Germany, we're going to have this fun situation. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is take back what is ours. Let's go ahead and attack this guy. 
So let's use the one that is not as entrenched. So this guy's 140, we'll take him. Of course, our tank. And even though this infantry is pretty low in readiness, I do want the three side attack. So we'll have him attack as well. Dark. We took a ton of casualties, but we did eliminate the entire force. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. That's much worse than I thought it would be. Um, I think we'll have this infantry even stay back. He's so totally beaten. I'm not going to even send him forward. That was uh, that was not a great attack. We lost quite a lot of people. But... Yeah, yikes. I didn't realize this unit didn't have any reinforcements either. That's not spectacular. Let's see. I'm pretty sure I used all the... Yep, we used all the line capacity for this guy. Well, the north is just going to have to suffer with a decreased troop count for a little bit. But um, these machine guns are pretty well entrenched. So I think we'll be able to hold on still. Okay. So that's all we need to do in the north. We've reopened supply lines by getting that railroad road vein back. <clears throat> Let's see what we want to do in the north. Well, we will be able to attack from the north here. I think what is the most sensible thing to do is one, two, three, four, five. If we just click on these guys and do reconnaissance, you can see that the only place that they can attack that is enemy controlled is this. So, uh-oh. <coughs> Oi, excuse me there. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's dive bomb the crap out of this place because we can. Let's use both and just go full on. And <laughs> we did a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of damage. <laughs> so even their statistics were pretty strongly damaged. The readiness is down, the entrenchments way down, but we killed a ton. So yeah, you can see that there's only a shell of their original force here. It's probably not even necessary for me to attack from multiple sides, but we will anyway. I think I'll use the less experienced. So we'll take the 23rd with us. Attack from both sides. And we didn't lose a single unit and they were pushed back. Good. I think we'll just move the 23rd north. Oh, and they can follow up attack. Well, that's good. Let's do that then. Push the, well, actually, I may want to do a three-sided attack on this guy instead. Noting that these guys will not be... If this was the headquarters, which is 9th, are these guys supplied by the 9th? They are. How are they doing as far as supply goes? Whoa, not bad at all. Well, that's... Maybe it is worth attacking them then. Well, let's see. We have two um, dive bombers in Nagano. We do have artillery that's in range to bombard these guys. Let's do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ooh, we even got um, one of the armored cars to fall. That was, that was really effective. Wow, okay, so I don't think this guy will be needed. We probably won't be attacking with the armor, with our armor across the river into the hills. <laughs> That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But once we take this place, I could use the armor from here, I think, to attack. I think that would work. Let's see. Oh, hmm. <laughs> so the armor can't even attack across. It's not even an option. It would take too many action points for them to cross a stream and on top of that, attack into the hills. Well, we have um, dive bombers for a reason. Let's just go ahead and use the slightly less um, experienced one. Yeah. And this will just, uh, I think this will eliminate any of the real resistance we might have faced. Now note that, oh, they, they had some machine guns in there, but those defend worse in the hills anyway. Okay, yeah, now it's just, it's just over. I don't even think we need to do the attack from anybody except for the 19th. So we'll just do that. And there it is. Instant death on first round. 
Okay, which means that these guys can follow up attack. And another, pretty much a total wipe of the forces there. But this is not too surprising. We know at this point that the Germans are in full retreat. We're closing them on any other remaining combat forces are pretty much in air. So we're just mopping up the rest in the north up here. The question is even how do you, what's the best way to mop it up? I even have this, dang, I have this artillery which can move here. I guess we'll bombard this unit since it's the strongest remaining one. And we can actually follow up the bombardment with a dive bomb attack too. Since it has enough armored cars to be somewhat of a threat. Mm hmm. All right, another devastating attack. Not that there's much left to be worried about. Yeah, it's just unfortunate that we, this armor can't even move. I'm not sure what the best plan for them is. The mountainous terrain is just not where they belong. But there's no real, there's no other place for them to really go. <laughs> like, we might just have to admit at this point that the armor has served their purpose in the Western Front and we got to pull them back and maybe put them in the East. But I mean, it's really true. I, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> there's no, I don't, I don't have any use for them. Nine staff or six, yeah, this is pathetic. I mean, even the number of artillery I have down here is way too much. Okay, so we have some unit here. Oh, I did build this road bridge across just to supply units in this area better. Let's see. I want to do an attack here, which means I want to do an attack here. Okay, well, let's attack. Should I just use artillery? It seems pathetic. <laughs> Excuse me. I think I'm going to move this artillery forward instead of bombarding. Maybe even I'll just move them all the way over here. Oh, okay, so there's an armored car, low readiness. Yeah, armor. our armor can take this. Okay, now note that although the I can move in here, right, that's because there's a road connecting these. So movement cost is the movement of a road. However, I'm still going to be attacking with the penalty that a swamp would it would give them. I mean, would give me, which for tanks is 75%. Now, the good news is that their armor cars will be defending at 50% because um, armor also takes a 50% penalty even when it's defending in the swamp. But that might be a good enough reason for us to move our artillery here and bombard them. which we'll go ahead and do. Now that means that we're not worried about an attack because even just the riflemen and machine gun, they're probably enough to take these guys on. But since we have the armor and the armor is better against armor, we'll go ahead and attack again. Excellent. Okay. So we'll move in there, even though they won't defend very well. I don't see them being attacked. It would be very difficult for them to be attacked by anybody. We could even move one further and follow up that attack. This is a plains, and we would take their gun factory. Now I have no use for the gun factory. I would just destroy it, if anything. But um, it does take it away from them. There's some, I, I'm not worried, because if they're producing any guns right now, they would just be immediately eaten by my advancing forces. So it's not a concern, even if they are producing guns. Um, yeah, I'm worried uh, the only thing that they could use those guns for is if they were moving them to the north. Their artillery would be very effective up north. All right, so I, I think I want this unit to attack this one, which means this guy should be, wait, can this guy attack across the river? Probably not. Oh, he can. I know, um, Tanks suffer a huge penalty attacking across the stream. 
But I think in this case it's justified because this is just a staff force anyway, and um, we have such overwhelming combat strength that I think it's worth it. Yeah, so it was. In these situations, I feel like it's almost as worth it to do um, these attacks. I actually, hmm, I f kind of forgot what I was going to say. Like, why would it be? Oh, even if I only had the infantry on the tank, it didn't even have the tanks, it would be fine, justified. So let's move here. Oh, my, here's their first HQ, first headquarters. Finally, I found them. Now, this guy's going to attack here. So do we want to attack with your forces? <laughs> it's not necessary. Let's just attack. Good. Let's take a quick moment to check out our supply. We won't have supply moving in there. Good to know. So don't move there. Okay, we need to keep moving. I don't know if we'll have supply. Okay, if we have supply here, we should have supply here because there's no river crossing, stream crossing here. So let's go ahead and attack in there. Let's use the um, let's use the seventeenth. Oh, we actually took some casualties. Their staff. Well, when you're attacking into the high mountains, I guess that's not um, the biggest surprise. The high mountains are pretty hard to defend. I mean, pretty hard to attack. Hmm. I guess let's move both of our units in there. Hmm, 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 hmm. This guy, he's free to move forward, but does this. This is not out of supply, thanks to this engineer. Um, yeah, I guess we do want to move that across because we want to. Oh, but this guy can attack. I suppose he wants to attack the staff here. So now if I had the artillery, the best thing for them to be used for would be um, bombarding this group. Because 46 staff is something. It's not nothing. Do they have any kind of combat strength against armor? Not really, but... Hmm. I'm just debating whether or not I should tack in. So where does this guy move? Hmm. No, I don't think I need to be that hasty, so we'll not do it. And I'll build a road here, and I'll build a road across on the next turn just to further supply these guys. Since this hex can be just as easily supplied from here as it can from here, there's no point in building a road here. All right, well, I think we're done in the north if I don't do... Oh, I could do another attack north. That would probably be youths. Let's do that. I think I won't move it forward, but I'll just push him back because I want to prepare for a big attack on the next turn. I suppose I will follow up attack this guy. Don't give him time to recover, right? And the bridge survived, is that what he said? <laughs> That's weird. Um, I don't see any way for them to be cut off and I'll move this infantry forward to further secure that area, so we're good. Okay. In the south, we probably are going to attack this guy, so let's do bombardment. No. <laughs> did I do attack? I thought I did bombardment. Yeah, that's what I want. Pretty effective. Um. Let's do the attack. I don't know if I'll, I'll probably move these two in, but there's no point. The two guys on the flanks are exactly where I want them to be. Perfect, so you guys will move in. Just pushing up slowly. Um, but what I'm gonna do is, again, the same situation we had in the north. This is the only hex that these dive bombers can reach. So we're gonna just dive bomb the crap out of them. All 
All right. <laughs> I don't even want to attack them because I'm fine to have them just sit there and get bombed for eternity until I take tree air. So I, I would prefer not to push them into tree air. <laughs> I just want to keep, you know, attacking tree air with my artillery for forever. <laughs> so, um, okay. So let's do the artillery bombardment here. And then the big barrage on Trier. I, I would not want to be uh, an individual in Trier right now. The city has just... Despite the fact that it doesn't supposedly have location damage, which I'll show you in a second, um, we've been bombing it to just blowing up everything. So it took 823, which means it's down to 1177. It's just strange that it's repairing more than 300 every turn. I know I've said that a million times, but I'm just so curious why that is. Hmm. Hmm. It would be nice if we could get some dive bombers to take out their armor cars, because they, they will hold Trier pretty well. Okay, well, we have this unit surrounded, and um, we have done a good job with the artillery. I feel like it is time to move in on these guys. Their time is up, so let's do it. Let's attack with, okay, is this a crossing? It's not. So let's attack, yeah, with the armor here then. And let's take this infantry and this infantry. Will this help at all? I think not. I'm gonna leave this guy out. I don't know why, I just have a, a feeling that it's better not to attack with him. Like, uh, sometimes it, it would have put us more over the attack stack penalty, and actually I want this guy, I might want him to move west. I'm not sure what I want to do with him, he's kind of a reserve unit, so I, I didn't want to attack with him. Okay, well now Trier is almost totally cut off. We do want to move this unit forward. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see what these units are. I hope just headquarters though. And if this is as strong as it looks, 14 armor cars, good gracious. What we'll do is attack this unit to push it back, but we won't move forward. We'll just sit here with our armor and infantry. So just attack with the armor, because the armor is going to probably annihilate these forces. Okay, that's good. And sit there. So what is this unit going to do? What does the supply picture look like? I probably could move this headquarters one more closer. Yeah, that makes sense. And that won't really change the supply situation much, but it will change headquarter proximity. So the proximity will be closer for the guys in the west. Hmm. Maybe I should move here because it will help my attack on Trier. Not really. I don't see any... I don't really see anything for... Hmm. The only thing that looks vulnerable is... I'm pretty sure the armor cars can't get to this next turn. Yeah, they would have to cross the stream and it would be in enemy territory. So the best they could do is probably get here. If they did that, I would counterattack. But maybe it's worthwhile just to defend anyway. Okay, I'm going to put this guy here. He'll kind of protect this supply line a little bit. All right, that's all I'm going to do in the, in the west. This video has already gone the full length, which is not surprising because that's how long my videos have been taking with only one front. But we have another front here. I think I might even pause this video here and and pick it up in the next episode. So, War on Two Fronts now takes two episodes. <laughs> That's not good. I'll have to figure out a way to speed things up in the West. But I didn't do that on this, so I'll try to be better in the next video. Until then, uh, thanks for watching.